Alright guys, so I'm going to show you from scratch how to make a jungle type of scene in uh, Maya. And we're going to do uh, have a little terrain, so let's lay that down first. And what I'm going to do is focus on the tools that you can use strictly in Maya without sculpting. You saw the previous videos that I made were about sculpting and retopping. You can do that, but that takes time. And I just want you to keep that in mind. You have to be able to take time to be able to build those structures. <clears throat> and send them back out. The nice thing about using 3D Coat is you can actually build that structure and really get a sense of what you're looking for and what you want and it can come off kind of nice. So let's go in here and uh, I'll just put on wireframe on shaded so you can see my topology as I build my structures. So I'm going to go in here and do again we'll just do a simple uh, box, a cube. I'll do interactive uh, creation here and uh, I'll shape them the way that I want here real quick. And since um, we're mainly going to focus on just the building of these objects, we can step-by-step -step slice this guy up. But we could also smooth him out a bit here. <coughs> so let's give him, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergies. Let's give him a little bit of de um, definition here. We'll do six, six, and six, because he's an evil rock. Go <laughs> right there. And uh, prick myself up. So we can actually get this guy as a base right here and you saw me earlier do a real simple rock and show you how you can control flow but if we want one that's really um, we want one to, to we want to make it quickly dynamic and organic and remember I'm giving you a high poly uh, limit on here like 300,000 what you can do is you just go in here we can smooth this out and believe it or not with it smooth we can now go in here <coughs> excuse me um, go to my verts here. I can go in here and do some soft modification on this guy. Or simply just grab a region and pull on it. Grab another region, pull on that. And look how nice the soft modifications are allowing me to build a rock type of structure quite quickly. Put him in the middle, pull that up. He's still square though. We don't want him to look like a toaster, so we're going to change some things around here. Oh, too much. Control Z. And uh, we can control or drop off control here. Go back. Regen around. Do one more here. Pull that out a little bit. And look how quickly we can actually get a nice stone object. And you can put as many as your happy little heart wants to do on these and we can get a nice like smooth stone maybe by a river and only if we have enough displacement um, edges or enough uh, edge loops here to be able to create that and I'm doing this again without using Mudbox 3D Studio Max or 3D Coat so you can actually do this really quickly in Maya to get a base you can even take this now into those programs now with him set up I'm gonna grab him and do control D and I now duplicated it I'm gonna pull them over and drop them down into my scene now for polys that aren't going to be seen you can feel free to go in here and let's switch this to faces lower my B key keep my finger on the B key here or lower my brush excuse me by keeping my finger on the B key and I can now make it a little bit more select all these areas that are never going to be seen. Now if you're never going to animate it, no one's ever going to see it, just delete it. Get rid of it. Nobody cares. No one will hate you for this. And we're using the paint selection tool because it has a built-in backface calling. I'm not going to select stuff on the other side. Cool. So I can actually delete that right now. Kind of gut it a little bit. Probably could gut it a little bit more, but for now I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge. So if we do want to lift it up, we have the option of lifting it up. <clears throat> and notice we did that really super quick. Now the cool thing about this, um, with this guy set up here, you have a little bit of a paint option tools. You have a little bit of uh, tools to be able to paint on objects. By going into mesh, now again this depends on your divisions, we go to sculpt geometry tool. Now the Sculpt Geometry tool, some people don't like it, they think it's trying to act like a ZBrush, but it's not. It's basically a tool in which you can immediately edit your object and take care of things. This guy's way too big. There we go. It's huge. There we 
you go. Sometimes just zooming your camera out makes that happen a little bit faster. Um, but we can go in here and we can paint on him. Look, he has cancer. Oh, let me do control Z. Or we can even push in on the guy. By, you know, his state right now, when you first use it, usually really too strong. But you can control your max displacement. There's the also seam pull tolerance. You can also go under stroke if you want to turn on reflection. I'm going to lower my tolerance just a little bit. We can even lower opacity. It's a secondary kind of control there. Look at that. I can just do a little bit of bulbous features on this guy. And it does it pretty well. And because we smoothed it and kept him in a block state in the beginning, he actually um, comes off pretty nice. And we can smooth that out. Let's switch to smooth. Can smooth that out a little bit. Now, if we want to have like cracks and crevices, let me lower my brush size a little bit here. You can use some pinching here. And you can pinch areas. Maybe you want them to be, well, actually it has to be a little bit bigger based on our geo. You can go in here and you can pinch an area, maybe force a crease. Maybe there's an erosion area in here. You can do that. I can force it right in here if I keep doing it over and over again and have like a line show up and then you can also indent it if you want to now we're going to lower that indention because it's going to be too big so let's lower that and then now I can go in here and maybe indent that that's it's still a little bit too strong so what we'll go in here and there's a max displacement let's lower the opacity a little bit makes it a little bit lighter and we can lower the max again a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more subtle. And again, remember, it's limited based on your polys. And the rest of this we can maybe smooth out. So it's just a little bit of a slight indentation. Make sure I hit right, hit the left mouse buttons and smooth that out. All right, so a little more of an erosion type of region. You can also average your vertices, which is kind of nice. It's like this tool up here. And I mentioned this before, your average uh, vertices um, allows you to uh, displace the vertices, average them out so that they're all kind of at an equal distance. Right, I'm just kind of smooth that out a little bit. Not quite as organic as you might want, but now we got a little bit of erosion area. <coughs> we can do the soft modification tool again. And we can do it on a certain area here, like this guy. Squish that down just a little bit. Cool. Not too shabby. And uh, when you're done with it, what I like to do, and you can hit the T key to get the guy to come back up, I can go ahead and hit uh, Control D, duplicate it, hit the W key, and relocate it. Now, again, not only can we use that tool, let me move this guy out of the way for a second. All of his soft modification pieces will go together, unfortunately. Ooh, you can actually tweak them out if you want any way you want, but you gotta be careful where you move these because it's away from the object of interest. Look, a new rock, boys and girls. Um, I'm gonna kill him for now. So we're gonna grab him, delete him. Get rid of the guys. Don't need those guys. Um, so now I can grab this guy and I can use again, hit my space bar. I'm gonna go to create deformers. I'm gonna go to the lattice tool. Now the lattice tool. I can use him to change the shape of this guy, or I can go in here, and we talked about using the lattice tool in the past, or we can go in here and create deformers, and I'm going to do non-linear, <coughs> excuse me, non-linear, and I'm going to go to um, my squash. Now this is a great tool because you can quickly get a brand new shape just by using the squash tool. And you would never know that that guy's part of this guy just by me changing it. You could probably guess at it, but actually it's not too bad. And we can even rotate this tool if we want to. And when you rotate it, you can get a different shape. Kind of cool. <coughs> Very unique type of structure you can grab. So I just want to show that real quick. But overall, what I want to do is I'm going to keep my lattice pretty simple. Let's go to Create Deformers. Let's go to Lattice. And I'm going to keep it, I have it pretty high, this is for a character I was working on. We can do 1, 1, and 1, or in this case let's do 2, 2, and 2. This is height, width, and depth. Down here controls how strong those points that aren't being selected 
are influencing the geometry. I usually keep these typically at two, and that's fine, but you can change those later on <coughs> in your um, channel box area, even in your attributes, but you'll see that secondary control. Let me hit up create, and you'll notice it'll be like FDD1 down here. All right, so now that we got this guy, lattice. Grab these pieces. Probably could go a little bit higher, but that's fine. Um, actually, yeah, let's go and make that a little bit higher here. So we'll do three, three, three. Oops. Hit enter too soon. There we go. And then do lattice points. And I can pull this up. I can scale this up. And I can move my points around because he looks so much like the original right now. Let's just move it. And you'll notice this is where you can really see how the lattice is strong to be able to make shapes the way you want quickly and efficiently. And it has minimal hit on your object. As in like if it was already UV'd, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Pretty nice. And we can control D, move them over, and even make another one if we want. So maybe just one that's a little more that's longer. <coughs> and we can change them up a little bit. So in this case, I'm going to pull up on these guys. Hit the W key. Move that up. A little bit higher. Grab this guy here, maybe move him a little bit higher. And overall, you can even grab the lattice overall, hit the R key, and I'm gonna scale him up. Probably need to get a little bit more room in our environment here, so let's let's bump that up a little bit. Now these guys kind of look like clones, don't they? So what we'll do, I made this guy in such a way, if I rotate him, and you gotta think this way when you make your pieces, it'll look like a different rock. Look at that. Oh, different rock. Just rotated it. That's kind of thinking like a uh, Mercedes-Benz symbol. If you uh, rotate it one position, even though it has um, almost the same type of look from each side, um, just think if you pile those guys on top of each other. Make it like a star from the top down. If you have corners covering one, two, three angles, when you rotate it, you can actually get a different view, a different angle, a different shape. So this is something to think about here. Do one more. There you go. And they still look a little bit similar, so we could highlight that. So we can make it a little bit less. Soft modification to the rescue. Indent that. Grab this guy, maybe move him over a little bit. Indent him a little bit. Grab this down here, move that out a little bit. And let's go to object mode. And control D, duplicate it. Move it over. Grab this guy. Delete. And we got a new rock. And when we rotate him, he can look like a different rock every time. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that's a little bit of modeling theory there. Let's get to the trees. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these rocks together. And I'm not going to have them pipe shove into each other because when rocks are pipe shove into each other, you can tell. Video games or not, you can totally tell. Let me scale this guy up a little bit. And scale him out a little bit. Both ways. He's got a little bit of indentation plan for him, but that's okay. And uh, let's grab this guy and do Control D. And I think I'll just delete this guy for a second. Probably could have just deleted his history, but that's fine. Rotate him, and again, you'll see he'll change his silhouette. And again, that's what you want. Rocks that are very versatile. Move this up. Move this over. Bring this in. 
And uh, and you, these can be anything that you imagine them to be. These can be desert stone that's been eroded. You, a lot of times desert stone has a lot more chiseled look to it. And I can show you how to do that real quick here. So if we did want a little bit more of a chiseled look on our piece, you're going to select it like that. And again, check your references when you do this. Just don't assume that you know, because a lot of you guys are from the city, and you may not have seen desert rock in a very long time. So I can grab just a little piece like this, and I want to say I want it to be kind of layered like desert rock. And what I mean is you'll see areas kind of chip off, 